understanding of who God is and your place in this life as you journey to heaven. That's the abundant part. That's the ability to know some things. Having money and all that stuff, be influenced, that don't get you nothing but things in this life. For us, as especially as we journey towards the end of our life, we want to know some things. We want to be sure. We want to be sure that this ain't no joke, that I've been fooled. And I think that the more that we want to know the truth for ourselves, whether we're going to like it or not, the more we want to know the truth, the more it will free our, our spirit and our mind and our hearts and, and the heaviness that this life brings on us with its cares and concerns. Everybody wants to hear the good news. He says, I hate the guy that shares the good news. Well, maybe it's not good news because he said he always prophesies. But look, look, look what he says. He says, I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me but evil. Well, why is that? Why is he prophesying bad things to him? Because he's doing bad things. <laughs> He's doing bad things, and you're doing bad things. He's going to look. My son Jacob is, is living the blessed life right now. And I'm so proud as his father to just watch him turn into a new man, a man I've never met before. He mentioned to me how amazed he was. I might have said this already. I'm just so excited I keep saying it. How amazed he is, how fast the blessings are coming now. How fast so many are coming. And I told him, I said, God's always blessed you, son. He's always carried you. He's always had, you, had grace for you. He's always had patience on you. Um, he's just always waiting for you to catch up to that understanding, what he's had on you. And he is. He's realizing how much grace he's had on him. And he's just overwhelmed. And I told him, matter of fact, he bought a truck a couple of Wednesdays ago, and you know when you drive off the lot, your car depreciates about ten grand right, right off the bat. Everybody knows that. Well, my son went and did bought him a car for a certain amount, and then when he went to get it appraised to get this and that done, it was ten thousand dollars more than what he actually paid for it on Blue Book value. And we're like, son, that's I don't I, don't, I bought cars my whole life, and I've never seen you drive off a parking lot with ten thousand dollars equity in it off the bat and that's how i said that's how god is blessing you and i said but think about it two years ago was when you decided to change two years ago and in those two years it wasn't easy wasn't nothing fun about it Matter of fact, you were having to learn new things, new ways of coping, coping skills, new way of, of, of doing your day. There's no weed in it. There's no beer in it. There's no alcohol in it. There's no partying in it. And so you had to learn to do your whole life every day differently. And, and it wasn't easy. And you were frustrated. And you were anxious. And you were all these things. And things weren't coming. But all of a sudden, they slowly started falling into place. And now you can just see that God has fulfilled the promises that he said he would give, if you do your part, he'll do his part. But if you don't do your part, the Lord has nothing good to say. The Lord has nothing good to say. I like this cane. <laughs> let, me show, let me get up another word. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Break the TV. I just, I just, I love the fact he said, does not prophesy good concerning me but evil listen how many people think that that's the lord too that the lord just thinks that just the doom and gloom lord that's not true that is not true and jehoshaphat said listen to what the king said of judah because he's a wise man let not the king say such things that's ridiculous. That's from the Lord. If, he, if he's prophesying bad things, that's from the Lord. You need to pay attention is what he's basically telling him. When people come in here, when people go to a church and they hear there's a prophet there. I went to churches where supposed prophets came. And, and, and I would remember how many people, oh, man, I hope I get a word tonight. I hope I get a word from the Lord. 
hope I get a word from the Lord. I remember the anxiousness of hearing people say, oh, I need, I need a word from the Lord. I need a word from the Lord. And I used to be one of those people, too, thinking, man, I need a word from the Lord. I hope, hope he prophesies over me. I hope when I go up there for prayer, I hope he has a word from me. I used to think that. And then one of these days, the Holy Spirit says, son, I'm always got a word for you. I've always got something to say to you in your situation. I get it, I get it, David. I can bend over still. Thank you. And I realized that as we, as Christians, what, when we were saying we wanted a word from the Lord, is we really wanted some affirmation from the Lord. We wanted the prophet to tell us what we wanted to hear. We want to, we, we're hoping he tells us something positive. Oh, you'll find the perfect spouse. Oh, you'll find the perfect house. Oh, you'll find the perfect job. Oh, you'll find, what if he tells you it's going to get worse for you? One of your kids is going to get sick and pass away. Do you want to hear that truth? No. Nobody wants to hear those kind of things. But people, people fall prey because usually prophets don't give that kind of message. Usually the prophets tell you that the Lord is going to do some great things and blah, 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 blah. Don't forget the offering on the way out. Listen, we, we, are, we are naturally born with selfish tendencies. Even as Christians, we have to learn to maneuver our life through our selfish tendencies and want what God wants more for us than what we want for ourselves. And that will keep us from following after people that say what we want them to say i want the truth i want to know the truth and i remember when i began my journey listening to different preachers you know first i'm only listening to these guys and then i start listening to these guys and i start listening to these guys so i've listened to the a whole spectrum of different preachers over my lifetime and there's some charlatans out there there are some straight up charlatans that are just tricksters. And I don't, I'm, I'm amazed that they don't fear the Lord. <laughs> Use his name, but don't fear him. That blows me away. But check this out. The king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robe, sat each on his throne at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And then all the prophets prophesied before them. Now the Zedekiah, the son of Chennai, had made horns of iron. Now listen to this guy. He goes all out. He made horns of iron for himself, and he said, Thus says the Lord, with these you shall gore the Assyrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth, Gilead, and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophet. <laughs> now this is what he says to him now. Listen. Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord encouraged the king. Listen, everybody's saying this one thing, you need to say the same thing. That's what he's telling him. <laughs> he says, all the prophets with one accord encourage the king, please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak encouragement. Sounds like the media being told what to say. It says, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Now, notice what he says. That's not the, f he lies at first, but then he tells the truth. I just thought it was interesting because he says, whatever the Lord tells me, so I'm thinking at the very beginning, the Lord didn't really say nothing so that he could say what he said. And then the Lord spoke to him. So he says, then he came to the king and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or shall we refrain? And he refrained. And he's answered, go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. I'm sure he said it very sarcastically. I'm sure he said it, maybe making the voice of one of the other prophets. But the king was smarter than that. That's what's, that's what's interesting, is that I think people are smarter than they come across to be because the king knew he was lying. He knew that that was a fake prophecy. He knew it because he knew what the man had been telling him all along. And he thinks he's going to come back now and say something different. Well, he'll be sarcastic and say, yeah. Maybe when Elijah said, won't you be a little bit louder so God can't hear you. Or he's on vacation. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear <laughs> that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? 
Then he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. That means there's no king. They have no master. Let each return to his own house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? I would tell my son the same thing. Son, you keep doing the wrong thing. Wrong things are going to keep happening to you. You start doing the right thing. Right things are going to happen to you. Now, two years later, he's overwhelmed by the good things happening to him. And listen, if you're just starting and you're just getting going, don't quit. Don't quit. If you're listening to us on camera, don't quit. Listen, there's a, there's a reward if for not quitting. There's a reward for pushing through. There's a reward for getting back up. Then Micah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So one spoke in this manner and another spoke in this manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. That one spirit had control of 400 prophets. Isn't that crazy? That one spirit had Control those 400 prophets. Now, here's another one. Now, Nehemiah is at the end of Jerusalem's reign, at the end of the 70 years, as they go back to start rebuilding the city. Nehemiah is on his way back. He feels like the Lord has called him to go back to build the walls of Jerusalem. And before you build the cities, you always build the wall. You build the wall to protect the inner workings of the city. And so Jeremiah, I mean, Nehemiah feels called by the Lord to go start the process of building the city. And the king of Persia allows him to do that. But when he goes, of course, the enemy's there and the enemy is opposed to anything, any work of the Lord. And in their tactics of trying to stop Nehemiah from doing the Lord's will, as Satan will do to you from doing the Lord's will, He has different tactics. And in these tactics, one of them was a false prophet. And I just thought that was interesting how the enemy has so many different tactics that he uses. Because listen, I remember being a hungry young Christian. Remember? When I got saved in 1992, I was a brand new book that needed something to write in. I just page after page of nothing in there just for somebody to write on me and I just remember going in hungry and I give me every book give me every tape and I just took everything in that I could get I want I would listen to every prophet I would chase prophets down I would go talk to them after a church service I, I wanted to, I wanted what they have I wanted the gift that they had because sometimes they would get it right sometimes they get it wrong but sometimes they get it right it wasn't until later that I learned they can never be wrong if they're a true prophet. You know that, right? You can't, and, and, and it's interesting, if you go and study some new prophet schools today, they allow for mistakes. They call it something. I call it fake. False. <laughs> false. You can't be wrong one time as a prophet. You can't be wrong one time. And some of these prophets were wrong that I was chasing and following and believing after. And um, even those that predict the end of the rapture, um, how many times over the years have you heard of people picking dates? Um, one, one guy from California had a group of people they were going to Israel for the Feast of Trumpets because they believed the Lord was going to come back during the Feast of Trumpets, but they, wa- but they bought round-trip tickets. <laughs> Anyways. Now it happened when Sambalat, Tobiah, and Geshem, the enemies of the Lord, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks left in it, though at the time I had not hung the doors and the gates, that Sambalot and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ano, but they, they thought to do me harm. So he's smart to know, understand they're just trying to draw him out to the wilderness. 
So I sent messengers to them, saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave, leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them the same manner. Then I sent to him, saying, No such things as you are, that you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart, for they are, were trying to make us afraid, saying, You know what? I think I forgot to put scripture in there. I did. They were, they were, the, the, he's replying to a letter that those men wrote saying that uh, uh, Nehemiah was doing a, a, a criminal thing, making him look bad. And so he's addressing, he's addressing their false rumors about himself, basically. No such thing as you are saying, or say, you say are being done, but you invent them in your own heart. For they are all trying to make us afraid, saying their hands will be weakened in the work. And it will not be done. Notice, the enemy doesn't want you busy serving the Lord. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward, I came to the house of Shemiah, the son of Delia, the son of Mehetabal, who was a, a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night, they will come to kill you. And I said, such should such a man as I flee. So he's the false prophet telling Nehemiah that he better go hide from what's coming. It almost sounds kind of like when Paul was told many times not to go to Jerusalem by many, many people. And he says, I, I got no choice. I'm going. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not scared to die for what I'm doing. Nehemiah is basically showing the same kind of confidence in the work that he's doing. He, th they're not sure if what this man is telling is the truth at this point. He's believing him to a certain degree, but he's refusing the way out. It's not that he doesn't believe what he's saying. He's just not going to try to do the escape route. He said, I'm going to stand and face this as a man, which... <laughs> he says, um, should such a man as I flee, because he's the leader, and who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? What kind of coward am I? I love that. I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all. That's what I pray for every single one of us. I pray that the Lord gives us the ability to sense the fake, to sense the false, to recognize it, to smell it, to, to taste it, to understand it. That's what I'm praying, that we get it. When we hear it, we go, that's fake. That's false. That's not true. Because listen, it's coming. Many, many voices that we've trusted in the past will turn against us in the future. You can't, you got to be careful who you're going to trust going forward. Because every single one of us as leaders and teachers and, and ministers to each other, we are responsible for each other. I told, I had breakfast with Jason this morning and, and I appreciate that and, um, and I said something to him that I don't really say to a lot of people because it sounds like I'm bragging, but I want to say it. I believe that I can be trusted to be your pastor. I know you've already trusted me because you're here, but I'm telling you, I don't want your money. I don't covet your stuff. I'm not trying to work into your inheritance. I don't want your wife, I don't want your kids, I don't want your house, I don't want your stuff. I don't want what you have. I'm happy with what I have. And I'm thankful for what I have. I don't want any more than what God has allowed me to have. And I want what all he wants me to have and nothing less. But at the same time, my motives are, are good. And I, I go before the Lord all the time with my motives. Lord, keep me in check. Lord, am I still the same person? Am I still, you know, am I still the, where you want me? And, 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 and I, I feel safe leading you. I don't, I, I'm amazed that there are people out there that, that don't even engage with their church or they don't they don't they, they, they're in it for selfish reasons for a paycheck or for what they can get from it. and i know that those are out there i just have a hard time understanding that 
And I just want you to know that I, 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 I pray and I go before the Lord and I'm, I feel safe to be your pastor. And uh, I'm glad I'm the pastor. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm the one that, that, that almost holds all the cards, I guess. And, um, but, I'm, but I'm also a, a, a co-leader, right? I, I, we all lead together, you know. So I, I just... that I should be afraid and act that way in sin. When he said, I perceive that God had not sent him at all, but that he had pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sembalat had hired him, for this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way in sin. Notice that he's saying that hiding was going to be a sin. So that they, may, they might have cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sembalat according to these works and the prophetess Nodiah, and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. We know in, um, in 2 Peter, which the men have been studying, the books of First and Second Peter, it says, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be. So just know that there are going to be people out there calling themselves prophets, working in the ministry of the prophetic, and I would beware of any of them. You can test every spirit, whether it's from the Lord or not. You can test them all, and I would suggest you test them all. And um, because it says false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bringing on themselves swift destruction. To me, that's one of the people that, 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 that make Jesus a social you know a social warrior more than a salvation giver <laughs> you know he's here to give us salvation he's not here to make our lives better in this world um, other than what I mentioned earlier let me read a little bit more in uh, here before I go to the next scripture it says so in verse 3, when he says, within, full, within two full years, I will bring back to this place and the vessel of the Lord, Lord's house, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, the son of Je Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in, his pr in the presence of the priests, in the presence of all the people who stood in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. <laughs> he said, Amen. Um, the Lord do so. The Lord perform your words, which you have prophesied, to bring back the vessels of the Lord's house and all who were carried away captive from the from Babylon to this place he's saying amen I wish that's what the Lord would do absolutely that's exactly what I wish the Lord would do nevertheless he says hear now this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all these people the prophets who have been before me and before you of old prophesied against many countries and great kingdoms of war and disaster and pestilence. As for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as the one whom the Lord has truly sent. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and broke it. <laughs> Jeremiah's sitting there with his yoke on his neck the whole time. And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, even so I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus says the Lord. So he left, and then the Lord sends him back. You have broken the yokes of wood, but you have made in their place yokes of iron. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. 
Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, hear, hear now Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make this people trust in a lie. That's the sad part. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast you away from the face of the earth. This year you shall die because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. You shall die. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Just like that. It ended. And um, I want to take go back real quick. Uh, you remember when Micah prophesied to the king? What was going to happen? You look all the way down. I kind of skipped it. It says, now verse 24, it says, Now Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, Chanana, whatever, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way did the Spirit from the Lord go from me to speak to you? And this is what he said. Indeed, you shall see on that day when the Lord you shall see on that day when you go into the inner chamber to hide. He prophesied to him a fearful death. Like a, like a spirit's going to show up in that place where he's hiding or something. I don't know. That just a, that's an odd threat to put on somebody that's mocking the Lord. And that's kind of where I also am amazed that there are people out there that mock the Lord the way they do. Um, The la- Jesus told us, the last one Jesus told us. And then many will be offended and betray one another and will hate one another. We're, we're living in the day of offenses, right? Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. It says then they will rise up and deceive many. I believe that as the days get worse, we're going to see more people trying to move in the prophetic and, and try to use the supernatural because the enemy has the ability to use supernatural things to get our attention. Um, matter of fact, one of the in Deuteronomy where it talks about false prophets, it says when a false prophet prophesies and produces um, a supernatural lie. Don't believe it. Because it, it, even then it's going to be it's going to be uh, fake <laughs> and a false, but it's going to be supernatural. And that's what's going to get your attention. And that's what you have to be careful of in, in the day and age we live in. Because remember, even with um, uh, Joseph Smith, Joseph Smith said the Lord visited him and started a new religion. Paul said, if I or an angel of heaven preach a different gospel, may he be accursed. We have that word to nullify what happened to Joseph Smith, period. And so, but there are millions of people that have fallen under the sway of Jehovah's Witnesses. False prophets, false prophets, and more Mormons, false prophets, and Muslims. And so, you know, we just we just want to we want to be a church that checks for ourselves. And and I would encourage you, have a Bible. When you hear something that's that's that sounds a little different, write it down and go look it up. And and now with the internet, you can go and research some things for yourself. And then if you still have questions, then come and let's talk about it. I have no problem answering any questions that you may have about anything Christianity. I, I got an answer for everything. If I don't, I'll go find one that will back up what we believe. And, uh, and so far, I think we're pretty much, most of us are on the same page in what we believe. Amen. Well, you do believe that we're in the last days, correct? You do believe that things are going to get worse. You see that, correct? We know that even what happened this weekend, that this world is out of kilter and 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 and. <coughs> There's a lot of um, there's a lot going on in the world, a lot of a lot of talking going on, and we as Christians want to find ourselves on the side of the Lord, not on the right side, on the left side, on the Lord's side, and wherever the Lord's side is at, they'll be either right side or left side with it. We'll know. Let's pray. Lord, we need you more than ever in the days that we live. It's no more just going to church and planting our corn, Lord. Now it's 
going to church and, and fighting off the wickedness that's around us, Lord, standing up against the things that are trying to change our children, trying to corrupt our families, Lord, destroy our communities, Lord. We need wisdom. We need wisdom, Lord, in the days ahead. Lord, we don't want to be extremists. We just want to be extreme followers, Lord. And, Lord, I just pray for wisdom and the ability to hear your voice every single minute of every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.